All right, hello there. My name is Vanessa. Welcome back to my channel. Today I wanted to do my first half of the month wrap up for December because I've already read a few things and I know I'm probably going to read more things <laughs> towards the end of December when I go home. So I'll start with the first book since the last time I talked about books that I have read and that is Charlie Chan Hawk Chai by Sunny Liu. In my TBR for this month I mentioned that this book is a political history of Malaysia and Singapore. It's also a comics history of it as a medium and we follow all of this history through the eyes of a fictitious Charlie Chan character who is like retracing his life for us in this comic. Probably the first fourth of this book I was still confused as to is this fiction or non-fiction because that's how real Sunny Liu makes this character seem. It really seems like a true story and I think a lot of this has to do with the fact that he interweaves all of this real history so you start seeing real pictures and real names that if you google you realize that they were actors during this time of decolonization in Malaysia and kind of the warring factions between a more conservative government and a more socialistic kind of government that was sometimes painted as being more like communism. There were a lot of metaphors throughout the story that definitely went over my head just because I'm not very familiar with this history. My favorite parts were definitely when it was Charlie Chan growing up. My least favorite parts were more the ones of his actual comic strips. A lot of these comic strips were political, were discussing the government, but were meant to be metaphors. All these animals would represent certain people in the government or who are seeking power and of course I'm not very well versed with these people so as they continue to come up over time I kind of just muddled them in my brain but regardless of that I learned a lot in this really really enjoyed the art style I love the colors he used and I really really enjoyed how he put all these things together like this is a pretty massive volume for a graphic novel and you can tell that he took so much time to really decide what he was gonna put in here there's just so many different things in here that you can pick apart as having all very deep meanings. All of these first few books that you're hearing are all ones that I used for my Read Harder challenge. The next one that I used was Are You There God? It's Me Margaret by Judy Bloom. This one follows Margaret, our main character, who moves from the city to the suburb in New Jersey. That's her starting to go through puberty, meeting new friends, and starting at a new school. This is all happening with this main message or main goal of her trying to decide which religion she wants to follow because she's a result of an interfaith marriage. I really really enjoyed how real this book felt. Her worries as a young girl when it came to her period, boys, new friends that she's making, getting her first bra, all really felt true to my experience when I was 12. It boggles my mind that this book is almost 50 years old and it's still really relevant. Her going through all of these different religions and her trying to find her own place, the way she discussed and thought about religion was very mature and compelling as a story. I definitely enjoyed this Judy Bloom book way more than the only other Judy Bloom book I've ever read which was Forever and I had some problems with that book but this one was just way way better and I'm excited to continue reading more of Judy Bloom's work. The next book that I read was Holidays on Ice by David Sedaris. This is a really quick short book full with stories that have to do with the holiday season. I ended up not really enjoying this book. I thought it was just okay. There were definitely some stories that made me giggle and laugh. Mostly the first big story, Santa Land Diaries. It's about a worker who is an elf <laughs> during the holiday season and kind of all the ridiculousness and consumerism of our society when it comes to Christmas. I also really enjoyed Seizing's Greetings from Our Family, which is kind of like a fake newsletter. Towards the end, like the later half stories of this book were not as exciting. I think what I need to do is read more of his nonfiction. The next book that I will talk about is Soppy by Philippa Rice. This is a really short, cute book full of illustrations of this couple. There is no real story arc in this book and I want everybody to be aware of that. I wasn't really sure what I was getting myself into when I started reading this. There's not much to read <laughs> is, is what I'm trying to get at. It's mostly just cute illustrations of this couple doing coupley things together. A lot of them really made me smile and giggle and it was well worth my 
probably 20 minutes of my time looking through them. So if you're looking for something that's short and sweet and it doesn't really take a lot of mind power to get through, this is one you should check out. The next thing I will talk about is Miss Marvel Volume 2. This is Generation Y. I love the character of Kamala. I love that there is a Muslim protagonist that we are following being a superhero. Like, I think that is so cool and so necessary for us to have a more diverse cast when it comes to superhero comics. I also really, really loved the cameos that were in this volume. There were some people that I did not expect to see here, and they were a nice surprise. I think my thing with this series is that I may not be in the age bracket for it, really, because I felt like the plot and like the whole point of the story didn't really satisfy me. The whole point of it is we're millennials and people always say we're attached to our phone. We just take up space in this world and we give nothing back. That may be because I'm just slightly more sure of my position in the world. I mean, technically I'm still a millennial. They are talking about me still, but I feel like it might be for people who are slightly younger than me that need a message of you are the future. I just didn't really feel like I needed this plot line in my life to tell me that the future is bright because I am there. The next book that I read is Heads or Tales and this is by Lily Carre. These are just short stories in comic book form. Towards the end of the book it's shorter comic strips but there's maybe like three or four stories in the beginning that are real stories that take pages to unfold. There are some seriously weird and surreal parts in these comic strips, but I think the author does a really really good job at making them still feel grounded in real life. I'll give you kind of a taste of what these stories are about so you can understand what I mean about them being really strange. <laughs> Wishy Washy is about a guy who's really good at knowing how to decide things. And then something happens to him where he doesn't know how to decide as easily as he used to. It causes some strange things to happen to him. Him. In another story called The Carnival, this guy takes a drive for hours and hours because his apartment complex gets all full of water. He ends up meeting a mom and a son, then he starts dreaming and imagining, and then he comes back to his apartment. <laughs> and the art style is just really, really interesting. And if you're looking for something short, like if you only want to read a bit at a time, these are short stories, so you only have to really read like 10 or 15 pages before you're done with the story. And last but not least, I will talk about Another Brooklyn by Jacqueline Woodson. This story follows August, our main character, who's a young black girl who moves from Tennessee to Brooklyn with her father and brother. And this all takes place in the 1970s. I really appreciated the history that Jacqueline Woodson put in the background of the story, including the Nigerian Civil War, as well as kind of the repercussions after the Vietnam War when it comes to living in the U.S. And she also discussed a lot of the problems that were happening in the cities during the 70s, which a lot of historians discuss as urban decay. I really enjoyed Jacqueline Woodson as a writer. I'd never read any of her stories before, and people have always described it as being very musical. It made me really feel melancholy and really transported me to this new place back in time where I really felt like I was walking in this girl's shoes. For me, it was a good book, but I think its short length didn't allow me to really understand more of like what was going on in August's mind. It didn't pay off when we found out the reasons for them moving to Brooklyn and what happened to her mom and her uncle. So it just didn't leave as much of an impression as I expected. I'm definitely still going to read Brown Girl Dreaming, but I thought this was just a good book. So if you're into something that's short and you want to learn more about um, growing up as a black girl in the 1970s in Brooklyn, you can pick this one up. It's, it's pretty short. So that is my first half of my reads. <laughs> Most of them are graphic novels, as you can see. I'm still getting through Fingersmith, and I have a few more things that I want to read. I think I'm going to be participating in Cramathon. I wasn't going to be, but then I decided I was, so <laughs> I put together a TBR last night, and I'll be filming that shortly. I hope you enjoyed this video. I shall see you in my next one. Bye-bye.